top four traits of being an instant commander. Not an instant manager, instant commander. Yep, as it relates to managing chemical spills and leaks and events. So here we go. So we got four of these and we're like, what should we do this episode on? You know what? Traits. Like yeah. you, well, things you don't think about. So here's one of them. We talked about what is an IC. An IC is not an instant manager. Instant manager manages everything besides basic chemical leak. Mm-hmm. Instant commander manages a chemical leak, but instant commander still needs to be an IM. Yeah. So when we do training, we always combine them because our view is they got to be able to do all of it. Well, they have to understand how other emergencies at the facility, so fire, explosion. The fire could make the leak. You know, if I've got, make the leak. Yes. If I have electrical outages, whatever's going on, there are, there could be other events that either caused or are being affected, and we still have to know how all of those systems and what those managers are doing to manage that situation, how that interrelates to our chemical event and what we can and can't do. It's got to dovetail together. They've got to be currently trained and be in a tech because they have to know what gear to wear. Because how do you direct someone to wear gear if they don't know? Well, how do you direct anybody to do any job task if you don't understand what you're asking them to do and, and what right. risk is for that and what that looks like? You know, it's a completely different experience when you ask someone, hey, just run up that flat ladder real quick and you've never worn the gear and you don't know what that feels right. like. It, I mean, it, that could be a big ask potentially. And all my background was military and fire. And sometimes they use the word IC kind of like everybody that's in charge is an IC. In the general industry, we usually separate it out. We yep. separated IC as chemical, IM is more all other emergencies. So just as a reminder, when we're talking about fixed facility, this is as relates to general industry OSHA code, CFR 1910. This is not NFPA stuff. That's the fireside. All right, number two, one thing is they got to be calm because guess what? There's a good chance they're going to have some verbal confrontation while they're running command. There's going to be some excited folks yep. that are happy to provide their opinion. Yeah, and one of them usually is you have to be able to know when to say no. So, for example, I've lost count of how much verbal confrontation I've had when we said we can't go in right now. Now, that could be we don't have the current operator that can turn a valve. It could be that the outside resource is going to take longer than we thought. It could be, you know what, we're not going to have somebody just run in and turn a valve. We had that a few years ago where this guy came out and he was so mad at me because we didn't let him run back in and turn a valve. Like, the, there's no way. You it have was, no idea what that environment has done. And That's as right. a contractor, if you get hurt on my host employer's property, you can bet there's going to be some lawsuits yeah, and things so, come so out. We're no. Plus, nobody gets hurt. No, we're yeah. not going to get anybody hurt. So we're just going to say, no, we'll wait and regroup and get the right so, team together. To me, calm, knowing that that wave of whatever is coming at you, that equates to mental toughness. You better have some mental toughness and some thick skin because you're managing, people are coming for you. You're managing a lot of stuff. I mean, that, you, there's what do you episode, mean that we can't get the floors back up and running? Right. We did an episode a couple episodes ago. It talked about time mm-hmm. and, and time, is a, time of product, time in the environment, time for the location. But you're managing that time from the very beginning. And the one we did about 15 minutes is because in 15 minutes, you, that's a lot moving around. And part of that is you got to know how to delegate. So you got to be able to say, this is where I can't do this. And, I, and I've got to start looking at delegation. Yeah. So mental so. toughness, knowing that. You've got multiple agencies and people on the team itself and multiple managers that are going to be questioning every decision you're making and wanting you to explain to them who maybe they have never had any of this training. They don't know what's going on at all. So they they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. And you're having to explain. We can't legally do that. Number three is uh, who do you pick for that training? Yeah. Like in terms of what like individual personality traits as well as what roles at the facility make sense you to You want someone get calm. You want someone who knows a lot about the business. I mean, if I'm a new supervisor for third shift, I may be the IC, but I'm not the best trained overall for everything that's going on. I'm just IC for that moment. But I could be, maybe maybe it's a... Uh... Transfer in command pretty quickly if, yeah. if that's the scenario. I mean, you've got to consider... Who are you providing training to based on when you expect that responses could occur? So I need, first off, I need people trained on all shifts if I'm a 24-hour business and I expect that I'm going to respond on 24 hours. Absolutely. And I, and I want to have wastewater or rendering or any of the different parts of the sanitation. business. Sanitation. If I got sanitation on third shift, which most of my plants do... We should have an instant commander on third shift training. Absolutely. Because they, they know may, that chemical better than anyone. They may not run the entire event, 
But you've also got to consider the what's going on on third shift. It could be a chemical wrong mixture. It could be a right. chemical spill. They're the it, chemical experts. Or it could just be that's when we do some of the work because the plant is down in that moment. So we're doing other projects and maybe it is an ammonia release. That's so correct. depending on what it Let is. Like cleaning an evaporator on cleaning day and had a leak. Yeah. So depending yep. on what is what is going down and what is leaking, that's also going to change who it makes sense to train in this. So if I'm going to have sanitation things going on, I think in my world, it makes a lot of sense to try and get food safety involved as well as an incident manager, because they've got to clear the product and say it's good or it's not good. And we've got to tank it or it's fine. I mean, they've got to be involved in some of those things and understand if we can't get this shut down right now, we're not gonna be able to hold temps in the freezer. That's a problem, guys. It, it, they're going to be able to be a part of some of that decision making process. So they should have some training too. In my now mind. we think the GMs can go to the training to be an IC, but the GM should not be an IC. They sh- I think the education part is fine. I think they should never actually be running IC. There's things like they got to do corporate contacts, customer contacts. Maybe we can't get product out today. They may be ordering food for us, helping coordinate. Hey, maybe HR. So we're gonna days. be here for twelve. Yeah, all, if I can't get to the cafeteria, I'm hungry. I'm tired. Everything's broken. I gotta feed I'm everybody. Hungry. Still, yeah. just the team. Yeah. So there's a, there's a, also management who comes in or not. There's a management functions that are going on. Canceling still shifts. Yeah. Canceling shifts. Locking down the roads. Spending yep. with the agencies on those. So yes, you can have some senior managers trained, but that's usually more for information so they know how to communicate to other groups or agencies just what's going on. Yeah. So, so usually in my world, the folks that are actually physically running IC, it's my utilities folks, it's my sanitation folks, possibly, you know, safety, engineering, engineering and maintenance, yep. maybe a superintendent who we want to have the education of what's going on so that they know how their department or their roles affected. I love, like I said, I love having food safety involved. I love having HR involved from the dignity protocol side, from the employee, like canceling shifts and things like that side. I like to have my nurses involved so that they can know how that they're kind of interrelating with the triage situation and, and, and all of that going on during potential decon. But there's two things we want to note. One is just because I was a safety manager, just because I'm a safety manager, if I didn't go to IC training, don't mean I'm an IC. You got to watch the roles. Sometimes they'll get a little blurred and people say, well, they're that role. So they're automatically going to be, they didn't go to IC training. No, they got to go to IC training. Yeah. So basically the way it works is their job and role at the facility doesn't mean no matter what, because the same goes for my engineers. If my engineers don't have a current incident command certificate, they can't manage a hazmat event. And like Joe said, same goes for safety. So it's really critical if those folks want to be involved, they've got to get to the tech training and they've got to get to the IC training. So that's, that's the, the training part of it. And then number four, is when he, when he basically done? When does when it does end? my job as when, IC done? When can I be done with this? I start at seven a.m. running IC, but I've already been up all night working thirds. Yeah. How long am I supposed to be here running IC? Because maybe I need a lot more people trained now. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Usually the leaks happen at the end of somebody's shift and the worst weather and the wor- <laughs> yeah, that's just inevitable. It's like I've already been here for way more hours than I thought, and then it happens at the end of my shift. And I'm like. Okay, and yeah. he and here we go because here goes twelve more hours. And I'm if it, if it was my plant, I'm edgy about leaving because I I know what I'm doing. I've had a lot of ICs. They don't want to leave during the day. They don't want to because they have ownership. But there comes a point where you're tired. You're, you're making hungry, errors. You're making errors. You're, and you don't even realize it. So when we talk about the traits of who should be an IC, sometimes it takes another IC to come in and say, "Hey, hey, you got to go home. Yeah. You got to get some sleep. You're not doing us any good. You're making it worse. And you're starting to make so, errors. And you're missing." And and big we things. know we know this because we'll get a call sometimes the first. 20 minutes, 15 minutes of a leak. But we get a lot of times, we get a call during this time. We've yeah. been doing this a few hours. Somebody's tired. Like, what can we do? Because we're starting to hear these weird little errors. And I'll get yeah. a call back and say, well, look at doing How this. How long you been up this. for? How long yeah. you been doing this? Did you this? eat anything? Did you sleep? I will sleep? tell you, yeah. from a physiological standpoint, there comes a point when you've been up for a certain amount of time, usually it's about 24 hours, you push pack like I'm not tired anymore, but your stomach starts hurting. And you kind of start feeling icky. And then once you start pushing that 30 hour mark, it's like I had a thought and now it's gone and I don't know what it was. <laughs> and so that's not helpful having those folks on staff. So you need somebody else to come in and say, we're transferring. You got to go home. You're not doing us any good. We've got this. And, and you've got to have enough confidence in each other 
that that person really does have it. They've got it. So part of number one is what is an IC is identifying the right group you have together. Yep. Part of number two is saying no. You got to have a team that all agrees. We say no. Yeah. Number three, training. We're all going to go to training together. So we're all on the same path, and we all agree. And number four, we all help each other. So if one yeah. of us needs to go on, or maybe our kid's sick and we need to, to go, go pick him up or so. We got to be able to have those. So all four of these are separate, but they're actually together. Right. So, I mean, one of my big ones is, is I like having extra senior level managers and supervisors and superintendents trained because again, they may just be holding it down for 15 minutes till my engineer can get there. My safety manager can get there. Utilities can get there. So they're just making sure it doesn't get crazy and, and decisions are made that make it way worse. And then they transfer command. So for that person, it may end up after 10 or 15 minutes. For, you know, my engineers and safety folks and utilities that end up managing the entire event and and are kind of the overarching manager of what's going on for the entire sequence of events all the way through return to normal. I mean, this could be tied up in litigation and citations and lawsuits like on the civil side. It could be yeah. a couple of years if you're asking, being asked to go to court and, and being subpoenaed for things. I mean, it really just depends. And obviously, you're not like actively running command that whole time, but you're still dealing with with the event as a manager and having to dedicate time to to do those functions, to deal yeah. with the citations, to deal with any subpoenas, anything like that. So, so it could be a lengthy process is what yeah. we want you to know. So All top right. four are the traits of Instagram. Top four. So again, this is just our opinion. It's based on what we've seen. Take it or leave it. You know, Do what you want with it. But this is just from our background and experience, just what yep. how, how we've seen things flow. And again, if you want more information, you can reference episode eight and nine where we really Good break episodes. down what yep. it feels like from the physical, I'm standing here emotionally, what I'm going through as an incident commander. We break down some of the events we've actually had, what we've ran, and we've got our team on some of those. So those are great episodes if you want to know um, just experience-wise what it feels like to actually go through that. Sure. And we talk about some specific scenarios. And then again, you can always join the coaching site, allensafetycoaching.com. It provides how to structure out these programs if you're not sure from I have an idea if I'd like to start and implement this program all the way through the training and implementation. So you get the full gamut on there. And then again, if you want us to do some incident command training for you, that is the service we offer. Allen-safety.com is our in-person training services where we come and do that hands-on with your team. So that's an option for you too. And other than that, Connect with us on social media. We'd love to hear from you. And that's all I got today, you guys. You can listen to that podcast, Spotify, you can go anywhere. Yeah, so if Al- yeah, yeah, so if YouTube doesn't work for you, we are also on the podcast side. So you can download us and take us with you anywhere, even if you don't have internet service. All right. Take care. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just simply to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.